about either one of these characters i didn't really watch gundam much at all and the only thing i've ever seen of transformers is the first two michael bay films which some people say are awful but i, I thought they were okay so other than those i don't know nothing about optimus and i don't know nothing about gundam from what i can tell though it seemed like just for a little bit of research that i gathered on them it seems like optimus may win this fight because He's got the powerful core inside of him that makes them all special and shit. I mean, th th this is kind of the only one thing I know, but I have to place my vote to Optimus. He is the most powerful Transformer, from what I've gathered. Uh, if you're not talking about, like, galactic-sized ones like Unicron and Primus or whatever, but I, I don't know. I don't I'm not going to pretend I know about Transformers. I don't know nothing. So, here we go. Let's just do this shit. Across this vast world of different nations with different people, it is the clash of opinions which truly divides us. However, there is one universal truth which absolutely everyone can agree on. Giant robots are freaking awesome! Like Optimus Prime, the original G1 Transformer. And the RX-78-2, the original mobile suit Gundam. These aren't just any robots, they're the old school classics. The first of their kind, and we're in for a robo battle of East versus West. Well, Optimus was originally a Japanese toy. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out oh who would win God. a death battle. Oh, yes, we're getting a power in this whole truck. Kind of Millions thing. of years ago, on a distant planet called Cybertron, a great unrest grew between two factions of robotic beings, Decepticons. the Decepticons and the Autobots. With little warning, they found themselves entangled in civil war. Led by that douchebag Megatron, the Decepticons started gunning down any bot they pleased for basically no reason, including some guy named Orion Pax, which will be important later. Rest in peace, Robro. What Megatron didn't know was that this seemingly random encounter would end up reshaping the universe. Thanks to a robot Gandalf, Orion Pax was rebuilt into something bigger, stronger, and way more recognizable. The newest commander of the Autobots had risen, Optimus Prime. The Autobots will never sacrifice freedom. Optimus is a powerful warrior with tons of awesome robo-powers. As a Transformer, he can scan nearby objects and morph his body to resemble one, becoming a robot in disguise. His favorite is a classic 1979 Kenworth K100 tractor, an oldie but a goodie which sports 500 horsepower and can book it over 80 miles per hour. He even gets a trailer which, when he doesn't need it, mysteriously disappears into thin air. No, really, where the hell does that thing go? I need to know. More importantly, the life force of every Transformer resides in their spark, sort of like a soul. And Optimus is no different, except that his spark gives him a few unique abilities. Yeah, his spark's pretty rare. Compared to other robo-people, it gives him increased strength, speed, and durability. He can shoot laser beams from his hands, fly with either a jetpack or his feet boosters, and move his limbs around while they're detached like some sort of ghost robot Ray-Ban. Ooh! Optimus is referred to as a .1 percenter. That is how rare a being of his caliber is. Is that what all those people on Wall Street were protesting? Even then, what? many of Optimus' abilities are further enhanced thanks to his possession of one of the most powerful artifacts in Cybertron's history, the Matrix of Leadership. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, it's, I mean, it's nothing much. It's just a piece of robot god. The Matrix is a conduit for the power of Primus, the creator of the Transformer race. Yeah, yeah. With this, Optimus can heal some of his most grievous wounds. But not all the time, like, you know, when he died. And use the power of the Matrix to light our darkest hour. Well, he has an impressive arsenal to hopefully keep that particular problem from coming up again. <laughs> yeah, never again. 
Regardless, he wields the Ion Blaster, a giant death cannon which prime one hands like a boss. This big ol' rifle fires bolts of energy strong enough to take down most Decepticons, and can even be fired into space from ground level. Even better, it never seems to run out of ammo. Ah, one can only dream. Optimus Prime also carries numerous weapons composed of Energon, a raw energy force used by Transformers to power their technology and, well, themselves. He's got a glowy Energon axe and Energon swords, perfect for slicing up robots yeah, of all awesome. sizes. And I guess they'd probably work pretty good on people, too. Fighting fire with fire, Optimus Prime led the fight against the Decepticons for several millennia. Eventually, the war even found its way to our own Earth. But we've got nothing to worry about with Optimus protecting the planet. He's tanked blasts that would tear other bots apart, like when this mega refinery exploded. It could be seen from outer space. He's punched the ground so hard, the trees around him freaking exploded. Child's play, Boomstick. He's strong enough to tip this large oil tanker, which, when compared to the real-life Seawise giant, must weigh over 700,000 tons. He's tossed a satellite into orbit and punched hard enough to crack Six Shot's chest plate. Who boasted that his armor was drawn from the compacted subatomic matter of a collapsed star. Just to let you know, such a star would have a density of over 300 billion tons per cubic inch. While great density doesn't necessarily beget great toughness, this still means Six Shot's armor was 500 billion times more dense than osmium, the most dense natural material on Earth. You're the most dense natural material on Earth. What'd you say? And our Robo Commander wrecked it. He's fast enough to catch up to this Decepticon space shuttle in just 23 seconds. Given the size of the Earth here and the angle of ascent, we can determine he's moving around 125,000 miles per hour. He's also a talented leader, capable of commanding a thousand battles at the same time via the Omniglobe. Like Skynet, but in a giant disco ball. He's used that crazy strength of his to punch through Megatron, who once tanked an explosion big enough to knock Cybertron out of orbit. And thanks to the weird robo-magic of the Matrix, he's even defeated Unicorn. Unicron. Who's basically a giant robot Satan who eats planets. This guy is unstoppable. Not necessarily. Optimus is certainly powerful, but after all is said and done, he has one major weakness. To violate that law would destroy our honor. He's just too nice. Yeah, he's kinda all about the whole honor and fair fighting thing, which kinda screwed him over more than once, and even gotten him killed multiple times. Plus, he killed himself once just because he accidentally broke the rules in a freaking game. Damn. But when his back is to the wall and all hell's breaking loose, he'll fight to the end, riding the eye of the storm. Pain. One shall stand, one shall fall. In the year 2179, humanity has embraced the stars. Well, mostly. Right. After a somewhat united humanity expanded across the solar system, the ideologies between those on Earth and those in space began to drift apart. A new space-noid republic, the Principality of Xeon, arose to challenge the Earth Federation. Space-noid? That like the Domino's pizza mascot, but in space? No, more like space Nazis. Dig jump! Oh, well, I guess it's no surprise that they started a war by gassing a populated space colony and dropping the whole thing on the planet. Man, that's messed up, but that's just how it started. For the real star of the show, some smart guys put their heads together and came up with the coolest thing they could think of. Giant fighting robots! These were mobile suits, and one of Earth's nuttier engineers had developed a suit which would put all others to shame. This was the RX-78-2, otherwise known as the Gundam. There have been lots of mobile suits named Gundam, but this was the original granddaddy of them all. This experimental mobile suit was hidden on a remote colony, but before its maiden voyage with the equally classified white base could begin, it was caught in a surprise Xeon attack. With just two Zaku suits, the Space Nazis wiped out almost all of the White Base's military crew. The only people left to save these secret projects were civilians, who had no idea these things even existed. Among those who rose up was a young boy named Amuro Ray. Brilliant, albeit standoffish, Amuro was actually the son of the Gundam's chief engineer, 
and had already stumbled upon the mech's coded blueprints. So he grabbed the owner's manual, jumped in the Gundam, and flew into the fight. Damn, not too shabby for going off just the manual. Amuro quickly adapted to its complex controls thanks to its learning computer system, designed so the Gundam itself can learn its pilot's limitations and compensate. Its body is made of a super durable Luna titanium alloy called Gundarium. Of course. Yet another fictional metal that's way better than anything in real life. For weapons, it's got twin 60mm Vulcan guns for ears. It's got a shield that can block shots strong enough to take down warships, and a gravity hammer, a supersized flail that's rocket propelled. Whoever came up with that Whoa. is my goddamn hero. Same with the guy who built the ultra destructive beam rifle. That would be the ingenious Dr. Minofsky. Thanks to him, the beam rifle is a marvelous feat of weapons engineering. Minofsky had developed a way to miniaturize the enormous megaparticle cannons found on warships without losing any power. The result is a Gundam-sized rifle that can take down entire fleets of ships all on its own. It's like having a pistol with all the power of a thousand tanks. A single shot could easily tear through a 13,000-ton Musai-class warship. Given the official stats of this ship, to tear it asunder like so would require a strike worth nearly 9,000 tons of TNT. Sure, the beam rifle only has 16 shots, but who really cares when you just need one? Last but not least, the Gundam carries two retractable beam sabers. Cause you can't have space battles without royalty-free lightsabers. But all these amazing weapons would be useless without an exceptional pilot. Despite still technically being a civilian, Amuro became the main pilot for the Gundam. Turns out, his skill was mostly thanks to his previously unknown abilities. Amuro was a new type. Like, uh, Pokemon? See, apparently humankind was never meant to live under gravity's pull. In space, without it literally weighing down their souls, some humans developed psychic powers. That is the dumbest backstory <laughs> for why someone gets powers. And we've heard a lot of them, Wiz. So what, he can like read minds or something? Sort of. These powers and their capabilities have little definition, often deferring between different people. Most new types can instantly understand each other upon contact, even drawing kinship between sworn enemies. Amro's abilities in particular grant him something akin to precognition. He can predict exactly what will happen on the battlefield and where his enemies will be and can capitalize on it if he reacts fast enough. How could he possibly predict I'd attack from the other side? He shot down targets too fast for the eye to see and navigated his friends through a collapsing fortress with no casualties. By the end of the war, his own reflexes were pushing the limits of the Gundam itself. A magnetic coating was added to the Gundam to compensate, reducing the suit's friction and increasing its speed by 27%. Over 14 years of military service, Amuro became a legendary pilot. He even learned how to use these super fast funnel guns with his psycho was the powers. Speaking of speed, the Gundam is comparable to the Red Zaku piloted by Amro's rival, Shaw, which is three times faster than the standard green model. During the first large-scale battle with mobile suits, a Zaku flew through the battlefield in seven seconds. By comparing the 1,072-foot-long Magellan-class starships in the distance, we can tell the Zaku flew over seven miles. This puts the standard Zaku's top speed just under Mach 5. When tripled to compare to Char, this means the Gundam can move at least 11,000 miles per hour, 15 times the speed of sound. Highballing it with Amuro's new type powers and magnetic coating, it's possible the Gundam can move as fast as Mach 25, though anything over that would put it dangerously close to re-entry speeds, which its chassis cannot survive on its own. The Gundam is strong enough to lift and throw this goofy mobile suit and tough enough to power through a magnetic field that's 7,200 degrees Fahrenheit. It survived plenty of really big explosions, including a detonating asteroid and a nuclear blast which wrecked Amuro's home colony. I bet it could wipe out the space Nazis all on its own. It nearly did. Amuro and his Gundam were instrumental to the war effort. It doesn't matter how much the Gundam was burned, it would always stand up, dispel the fear, and fly. <laughs> Die! Okay. All right, the combatants fight. are set. Let's end this debate once and for Something. all. But first, let me transform your eating. This is niceness is gonna go against him. And not even just that. I feel like Gundam just has 
such better reaction time than Optimus does. He's got uh, maybe the same amount of weapons as Optimus. I don't think that matters too much. Um, hella better durability. This thing doesn't even sound like it's ever been destroyed before. I have to go with Gundam on this one. It just it just seems much more reasonable. Uh, I mean, no, I mean Optimus is definitely strong in his own sense. He's died. This, this Gundam has not. They, I don't think they say anything about the Gundam failing. They really didn't give any clear weaknesses on him. Plus, the pilot is a fucking precog, so that boosts his reaction time. I. He's got that gun that could kill ships in one shot. I don't see any reason why that won't harm Optimus. All right. Here we go, then. But right now, it's time for a death battle! Still have to a fight. Checking something out, Sailor. Wow. It's more than meets the eye. Get your butt more back to White Face. If there's trouble, we can't send back up. Let's roll. <laughs> oh, the noise. It's an enemy monster. I told you. I told you. That's too fast. There you are. Decepticon, I have been in battle for countless eons. Oh, whoa! Oh, that was cool. Whoa, shit, shield! Oh, he's doing it now. Oh, whoa! Whoa! Nice! Not today. Oh, oh, go back. Oh! oh. Only one shot left. was an impressive machine, and Umro was a skilled pilot, but Optimus's millions of years of battle experience completely overshadowed Umro's 14. Also, we already know that Optimus was over six times faster and 9,000 times stronger. Holy hell, who knew Optimus was so freaking buff? But the Gundam held plenty of its own advantages. With Amuro's super future sense powers, he could keep up with Optimus's speed. And with the Gundam's firepower, who cares how much it could lift? Unfortunately, the Gundam's limited ammunition meant this couldn't last. And even oh, yeah, then, Optimus could that. certainly survive a shot from the beam rifle. Remember that refinery explosion Optimus survived? The one you could see from outer space? This blast left an enormous gash on the planet Cybertron. To measure the power of this explosion, we needed to compare it to the curve of the planet. 
Now, Cybertron's size is pretty inconsistent throughout G1 Transformers history, but even when using the alternating sizes between the cartoon and the comics, the blast is far more destructive than the beam rifle in both cases. And Optimus just walked right out of that bitch. And this isn't some weird outlier just out of the comics either. In the cartoon, Megatron survived a blast that pushed Cybertron out of orbit. And he's pretty comparable to Optimus. To be fair, the Gundam boasts some impressive durability feats too. Like when Amaru accidentally blew up Azaku's nuclear reactor right in his own face. Hey, give him a break. It was his first time. This explosion created a hole in the space colony which sucked out Amaru's father. Whoops. On the bright side, he's gonna save some money on Father's Day gifts, right? And with his height in mind, we deduce the scope of the explosion. It's over 150,000 kilotons of TNT. That's 10,000 times more powerful than the bomb that dropped on Hiroshima, but still nowhere close to the refinery explosion Optimus survived. Also, the Gundam couldn't dodge Optimus's ion blaster forever. It was fast enough to strike targets in orbit from ground level. That puts its laser speed over 3 million miles per hour. Even when he knew it was coming, Amaru couldn't react quick enough to dodge or block anything that fast. And even then, Optimus's time in the Omniglobe proves he can think way faster than Amaru. And just to blow your mind even more, in order to obliterate I mean, Unicron with the Matrix, the energy output must have equaled more than... <laughs> 40 Yoda tons of TNT. <laughs> like the Star Wars game! <laughs> and you know what they say, size matters not, especially when Optimus has defeated opponents as big as Devastator. The Gundam was a powerful mobile suit with some astonishing firepower, but was ultimately outmatched by the Autobot's strength, speed, durability, and experience. I'd say Optimus was primed for this fight. The winner is Optimus Prime. Thanks for watching, guys. If you want to see the exclusive commentary on this episode, just click that little box over there. And if you want the battle music for yourself, click the link down below and you can get it off of iTunes. See you in the next Nightwave versus... Nightwave versus Daredevil! Oh my god! That is cool! That is... Pretty fucking cool, not gonna lie. I mean, Nightwing is awesome. I've seen a good few cartoons of Nightwing. Uh, Daredevil, his movie sucked. The show was good. I don't know too much about him. He's blind. He's got sonar. I don't know. That could that could be a good fight. Live action, though. That's interesting. It would be like um, Super Power Beatdown. But anyways, that's all the time I got for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave a comment if we'll react to in the future. And I will see you guys next time. Laters!